everybody. Welcome to the Addison Sports Special on location. Well, uh, we're here with Big Tom Thayer. Hey, Tom, good to see you, buddy. It's great uh, to be here. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom got the uh, Inspirational Inspir Award. A little background on yourself. I mean, I know your background, but you can expand it. I know you went to Joliet Catholic. Yep. Uh, how was it there? Who are, do you get in touch with some of those guys still? Yeah, you know, you know, it's it's kind of a I've 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 lived a really special sports life opportunity because I grew up in Joliet, Illinois, my whole, whole life. In the same friends that I had from St. Ray's and from Joliet <laughs> yeah, right. Catholic are still the same people I spend time with today. Isn't that um, but great? then I was fortunate enough to play for the Bears. But my upbringing um, from Joliet probably played the biggest role in the opportunity for success in my life. Oh, yeah, I get And then, of course, Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, well, you know, at Notre Dame, for me, I, I'm the youngest in my family. And so I knew that if I went too far away, I'd probably suffer some homesickness. Oh, sure. So I went to Notre Dame. Um, so I could stay close to home, so I could still have the support of my family, and that I could play a big role in their life, and they could play a big role in my wow, life. Wow, good for you. Who was a coach at that time? Uh, I was recruited by Dan Devine oh, and his yeah. staff, yeah, which uh -huh. was huge a huge reason why I wanted to go there. But then after my sophomore year, they brought in Jerry Faust. Oh, um, okay, and he, that's So right. he came in from Moeller High School who is, is a great human being, a great person, but unfortunately we didn't have the success that we did the first couple of years yeah, with Dan Devine. That. Yeah, with Dan. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you made All-American too, though, that, uh, did you add Notre yeah. Dame? All-American yeah. folks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that's quite an achievement, you know. Uh, how, how did you uh, feel when they, how did they, they inform you by phone or give you a call? Uh, how did they pick well, you? Well, it's kind of weird back then because there was no social media and it was a matter of you getting a call in your dorm room really? or them calling one of the coaches and then the coaches coming up and telling you in front of the team. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, my uh, my goal was to get into the NFL. Okay. And you know, some of those teams that you make after the season, they're kind of the, the reward part of it. Mm -hmm. But the biggest reward to me was always going to be able to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So, as much as I enjoyed, you know, the postseason honors, I wanted to, I wanted to play football in the NFL. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did they have combine at that time? Did you have to go to a combine? So, you know how we just watched the combine about a week ago? Yeah. So, we had three of them. Really? We had one in Tampa, we had one in Seattle, and we had one in Detroit. Really? So, what you saw last week over that week's period of time, we had to do it three times. Three times. But now you Why? take you take this into account. So, I came out of school the same year as John Elway and Dan Marino and some pretty heavy hitters. They all competed at the combine. They did. They all came in with open arms and they they busted their butt at you know at three different combines but mm -hmm. you know I guess it's if you really wanted if you had your sights set on playing mm -hmm. in the NFL you did what was asked of you mm -hmm. uh, when you heard the Bears picked you how was your emotion what did you think of that how did they inform you um, you know so back then they you know nowadays they have the draft on tv and everybody yeah, goes to yeah. the location uh -huh. and you get walked down this runway yeah. and the commissioner yeah. gives you a big hug yeah. back then the draft was on a tuesday Is and the, right? the draft started at 10 o'clock in the morning and it went straight through until the very last pick mm -hmm. so there wasn't any fanfare that surrounded it so when i was pulling into the driveway of my home in joya jim finks who was the general manager of the bears at the time oh, yeah. he called up and said hey we drafted you in the fourth round Whoa, um, huh? but you know uniquely enough the year I came out of college was the first year they had the USFL so yeah. I was also a pick of the Chicago Blitz in the USFL yeah, and, well, and the USFL offered me a better opportunity so I went and played in the USFL oh, for three one. years oh, wow, and then okay. and then I, I transitioned right to the Bears okay. in 1985 the year we won the Super Bowl yeah. uh, expound on that Super Bowl a little bit your your uh, thoughts your feelings at that because you know millions we were all the Super Bowl we watched it uh, how was your 
feelings at, uh, at that point? You know, like I said, it was amazing for me because I I was born in Joliet, 1961. I've been a Bears fan my whole life. Okay. So to be a part of the Super Bowl team, I was just as much of a fan as <laughs> all the other people that really? were a fan of watching it. But I just happened to be on the field, <laughs> and so to be the youngest in my family, have an opportunity to play in a, a Chicago Super Bowl in and have my family being there along at every step of the way. Wow. It was just an amazing feeling. However, um, but I was still enamored with Walter Payton. I was still, you know, love the, the guys on the Dan Hamptons and the Steve McMichaels yeah, yeah. and the Singletaries uh -huh. and the guys I was teammates with. But, you know, when you have a chance to be a local kid, you get to play alongside and be and block for Walter Payton. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. Get much uh, better than, Tom, again, congratulations thank on you. the inspirational award. Thank you. I appreciate and, it. Uh, you de really deserve it. Thank you. All right, folks, stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. Uh, we're back uh, with Richard Derwald. Richard? Yeah. Good to see you again. <laughs> it's good we, to see we you. We saw you last night. It's we had be a good time. a long time. Uh, <laughs> but, Richard, a little his start from the beginning. You were a wrestler at the beginning. Right? Yes, you're, you're, I was, well, yeah, but I was um, first of all, you know, uh, I could not make any of the teams in school. I really? Could, no, no, I'm not a good athlete. I never was a good athlete. I couldn't play basketball, baseball, football. I was not. But good. you're a pretty good size guy. Now yeah. I am. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's something that I. In fact, I found this in my bag. I did not bring it for an interview or anything. Uh -huh. So that's back from about night. You, you know what they called me back then? Young Dick Derwald. <laughs> and, and you're the only guy that's interviewed me in years that we're about the same age. <laughs> so, uh, that's right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I wrestled some of the, you know, some of the Mighty Atlas and. Uh, you did? Yeah. Fritz von Erich. They, they got a movie about him now. Uh, really? I didn't last long with them. <laughs> yeah, well, I chose not you, to. Them guys were two, no. 300 pounds. Uh, yeah, maybe. I chose to give them. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm All as right. crazy as I look. All right. Yeah. After wrestling, then your career. Well, started. actually, what happened is I actually went to a wrestling match one night, okay. and I couldn't make any of the teams in school, as I just said, but I was sitting up there in up seats way up to 50 cent seats or whatever, well, yeah. and I made up my mind. That night, I was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. I said, someday, I, I failed at everything sports-wise, I said, someday I'm going to be in there, mm, and okay. I, I started lifting i started watching some stuff i sent for the charles atlas oh course. did you i had some weights underneath <laughs> my bed and uh anyway just to move right ahead because i know yeah. we haven't got a lot of time yeah. here yeah that's all right the, the, the guy that couldn't make a team in school became a professional athlete at at the age of 19 and mm. I, I did it all on my own wow. and, I, and, that, and i visualized that uh -huh. i saw myself there long before i was there and the First time I ever wrestled was with a guy named Baron Gattoni, and he was about 260, oh. and I was about 205. Oh, you were, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I came up to about 220, Did but you? I was still young, I was 19, uh -huh. and so I was still in the growing process, yeah. you know? But I'm standing there waiting for him to come in. There's 10,000 people standing there. Really? And I, and I looked up and I says, oh my God, this is where I was sitting, you know, when I was 14 or 13, yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I tell that story a lot because it shows the power of visualization. That goes with your health, it goes along with everything. Mm. And here I am today being in, inducted in this great ceremony. Hall of Fame, oh yeah. my God. Hall of Fame with, yeah. This is more than I ever thought it was. Is I, that I'm, right, oh, Richard? Yeah, yeah. A, well, very, very impressed. Yeah, Johnny's impressed by you and he wanted to have you oh, in it. Yes, you I, know? I really. And uh, we're glad you came yes. and uh, enjoy yourself now. Okay. Okay. Can I just say one other thing? Yes, you sure can. And I'm just going to be fast. I started, when I was started, in, doctors told my mother, you should not lift weights. People don't even know this. Do you know they're professional football players and the NFL, the, uh, the NFL yeah. everybody, they were prohibited from lifting weights. Really? There was no field houses, there oh, was yeah. no weights. Oh yeah, you get muscle bound. Muscle things. bound, you got it, well you know, you're from my era. So, no, that's true. Yeah. And all today, everybody's taking credit for it now. Yeah. And you know who, who told them not to lift weights in that? The AMA and the doctors. And yeah. I, I had to put that in yeah. there. And that's all I got to say. All okay. right, Richard, again, okay. thank you. All right, folks, stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're here with, uh, of course, uh, Dan Isaacson. Congratulations, Dan. My pleasure, Dan, thank on, you. On uh, making this Hall of Fitness Hall of Fame. 
Dan, start from the beginning of your career. Sure. How you got started. Tell the folks that. Well, my uh, career started uh, out of graduate school. Mm. My first job was at Sheridan Swim Club in Quincy, Illinois, my hometown. In Quincy? Oh, yeah, one oh. of our girls went to the Olympics and she yeah. made it to the finals of the 800 meter freestyle event. Is and so right? I was asked by WGM, the NBC affiliate in Quincy, to follow her. Oh. So it was my first kind of before I became fitness editor for Good Morning America, years bef years after, yeah. I was doing that. Uh -huh. Then I got involved with a large athletic club in downtown Denver, oh, a 60,000 yeah? square foot facility. Mm -hmm. That took me to Aspen Snowmass with our own company, my wife Kim and I, and that's where I met John Travolta. And he asked me to train him for the movie Staying Alive. Really? And that transformation really helped launch personal training, and Kim and I never made it out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Is he a, a pretty big, well, yeah, he's six foot, is he not? Six foot, yeah. Pretty, well, what the, what'd you have him doing? Well, the, the movie was Staying Alive. Sylvester Stallone was the, the director. Yeah. And uh, it was a very physical performance kind of movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really had to, he had to do weight reduction, had to increase his cardiovascular output. Really? And improve reduction. his function. Just in terms of all the choreography that he'd have to learn. So it was a, quite a project. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, good morning America now. Well, you, you yeah, know, well, that, that transformation, literally uh, within weeks we were training many people of high profile in, in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And we then developed a center out near uh, Toluca Lake by Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And then my goal was to get the first personal training center on a studio lot at Paramount Pictures, which we did in the 80s. Wow. And then we did the same thing. You must have met a lot of movie stars we there. We met huh? a, lot of, a lot of stars. At Sony Pictures, when we were there as well, with the first personal training and, and fitness center there, mm -hmm. uh, we trained about four films a quarter. Really? Uh, we're involved with uh, films uh, on that nature on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's your uh, message to the folks watching? Young guys wanting to get started sure. in the business, Danny. Tell them that. Well, I think anyone out there, you can do whatever you want to do. I believe that God has a plan. I believe that you can do be the best you are. And uh, don't waste your time and don't let time slip away from you. Go for it. Dan, thanks an awful lot. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're here with Tammy Lee Webb. Uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow, congratulations yeah. for well, that, Tim. When you get a certain age, that's yeah. what they give you, right? Oh, you're just a young yeah. kid. Yeah. Okay. Tammy, your career, I mean, expound on that. Start when you were a little girl uh, doing gymnastics or something. Uh, how that's did you get started? Gymnastics. That's, that's a... a um, gymnastics was not my sport. I had three brothers. My dad was a semi-pro athlete who played baseball. So I only had boys to play with, so I had to be very, very active. Mm -hmm. And so I became uh, what we would call a tomboy, right? So I was well, always yeah. involved in sports. So I played basketball. You did. I played baseball. I played whatever I could get my hands on. <laughs> and then as I got older, when I went to school, I decided that um, I wanted to do something that was physical. And it, back in that those days, it was physical education. Yeah. But it was about the time that aerobic dance was coming out. Really? And so I decided... In the 70s or what, 80s? This is in the 80s, yeah. in the early 80s. Yeah. And it was also about the time that women's bodybuilding was getting started. Yeah. So I did my thesis in women's bodybuilding because I wanted to see, would a woman's body change if they lift weights? Because back then they would say, if you lift weights, you're going to turn into a man. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, you can't it turn was into always, a man. Yeah, or if you, you lift don't weights. have the testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I did my thesis on it. Obviously, you can't because you don't have the testosterone that men have. But it taught me how my body worked and what I could do with the weights to create the body that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I learned that there was different body types. I'm a mesomorph. There's people that are ectomorphs What's and that? endomorphs. Body types? So they're body types. So mm -hmm. an ectomorph is typically a person that is long and lean. Oh, so they okay. make a good long distance runner. They're the ballerinas. Mm -hmm. They're the, um, you know, they're just, they're just kind of up and down, yeah, right? So okay. their muscles are more based on endurance mm -hmm. where a mesomorph were the stockier build muscle very easily oh, the okay. wrestler yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the sprinter 
Really? And then the endomorph is kind of that combination where they actually have a can build the muscle, but they have a hard time getting the fat off. Oh, so yeah. you, if you understand your body type, you have a better idea of what type of program or exercise or even do. nutrition yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, that would do. be appropriate mm -hmm. for you. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this. I lost a little weight in the last few months. Yes. And I don't know why. I mean, you know, uh, what, what do I do to gain it back? I mean, I don't well, want to, you know, yeah. uh, my, I'm, sh I'm short and stocky, you know. Short how and do, stocky. How do, I, how do I... So you probably were able to build muscle easily when you're, um, when you're younger yeah. as a kid. Okay. So you're probably an, a mesomorph like myself. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so what, what that is, is, well, what did you lose besides weight? So your total weight, you want, we want to know, was that your muscle? Or was that fat? Or uh, was it a oh, little combination of It could have been both? my fat that I lost. Yeah. Right. So you've heard the thing, you lose it if you don't use it. And muscle has no age. Muscle, it, it just it has no age. Yeah. So if you keep using it, it will see, continue to support you. Mm. So I always tell... Um, my oldest client is 84, and mm. we, it's, you've got to keep that muscle, you've got to keep the strength to be able to support your body. Okay. okay. Yes. I'm going to do that. Okay. Tammy Lee, <laughs> again, congratulations. Thank you. Lifetime Thank you very Achievement much. Award, folks, at the Hall of Fame. Thanks, Thank Tammy. You, honey. Well, congratulations to all the inductees today from the National Fitness Hall of Fame. Uh, Thank you, Don, <laughs> on camera there. And folks, thanks for watching the show. We'll talk to you next week, okay? Take care now.